Hi everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here. And I wanted to do a short video today on just the impact that we're seeing currently through the masking of people. Now, obviously we're in a, a sort of interim phase of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 pandemic, where we're being told that we have to wear masks. It's mandatory at the moment in the UK in shops. And um, although I personally think it's probably too late and not having the effect that it would have done had we have had it before the pandemic kind of got going, um, there are other issues around masking, which are not a lot of people are aware of. And that is to do with the way that the brain works in terms of our neurobiology and how we are geared towards facial recognition of other people. Now we're seeing currently a, a wave of anxiety in all sorts of people, um, young people particularly, uh, and some obviously who have been isolating and are now beginning to come out and try and engage in the world. And I think this is no surprise. I think this is due to our neurobiology basically that we are geared towards feeling safe in relationship with others. And we look for certain clues in other people to feel safe in our bodies. It's a body-based feeling. And what we do is we look at their eyes, uh, their face, how it looks, if it's smiley, if it's nice, if it's comfortable, the eyes are crinkly, if the voice is modulated and it's just nice and gentle, or um, it's very tight and, and aggressive, or it's completely gone, you know, depressed. And they are they correspond actually to three neurobiological states now we owe this understanding to a guy called stephen porges who he's not a clinician in the sense of he doesn't treat people but he he researches on the nature of the nervous system and how it relates to the brain and what he's found he's called polyvagal theory and i've talked about this before in other videos but poly means many and vagal relates to the vagus nerve which is the tenth cranial nerve it comes out from the back of the brain and it goes down into the body but it also goes up into the head face and, and neck area it connects to our eyes to our ears to our jaw to our swallow reflex uh, and the voice box as well and then it goes down on into uh, the organs of um, the heart the lungs and on down below the diaphragm into all the other organs of elimination and detoxing you know kidneys liver adrenals and so on so um, it's a very important nerve and it's the longest and largest nerve in the body and hence uh, vagus actually means wanderer it goes all over the place but it's the the top half this um, ventral vagal system which I'm concentrating on today, because that's the bit that, as I said, makes us feel safe and in relationship to others. If, if we're getting those clues that we are loved, we are cared for, or we are connected with someone, then it actually changes the way our physiology works and our, our heart <clears throat> is well regulated, our digestion functions properly, our elimination functions properly, and all the detox capability functions and so we have you know good skin good digestion we feel safe we feel secure our brain works properly because we're not toxic in our brain and this is being largely threatened by the response that we're enforcing at the moment of having to engage with people um, particularly professionals who are masked and i'm just going to simulate that now so you really can't see me uh, below my eyes and and you're having to rely on just the the feeling and expression that you're getting from my eyes which can be not enough information to actually determine whether you're safe or not and this sets up a stress response in the body now um we we sometimes call the the connectedness sense of the green zone i mean this is developed from carolyn spring's work um, she calls it the green zone, which is a lovely idea that when you're relating well to people, you feel comfortable and safe. That's great. Um, when you go out of the green zone into amber alert, which is your sympathetic fight and flight system, you immediately, you, the, the brake that regulates your heart actually gets taken off and your heart starts to pump. 
um, because it, what it wants to do is activate and mobilize you into uh, avoiding danger, either fighting or fleeing the whatever the threat it has determined. And of course, this was developed thousands of years ago, million, possibly millions. It's, it's an evolutionary adaptation to one-off uh, life-threatening situations like the bear about to attack you or you know you come over to the edge of a cliff and you're going to fall and you need to run the opposite direction to avoid death it's not really developed to cope with the kinds of uh, relational stresses that we have on a daily basis now and particularly during this epidemic so meeting professional people people who actually have control over you who will determine you know your life you know whether that be your doctor or your dentist or your any any professional really who is, is masked and gowned some of them are even gowned as well and you can't really see the expression on their faces means that you are reliant on a lot uh, reduced sensory information and as i say this can cause these huge physiological changes and if if in your past you've had experiences like that where you were overwhelmed uh, in situations where you could not flee, where you could not mobilize, so you can't run away from the dentist, you're pinned in a chair, for instance. Um, and if you've had dental trauma or you've had any sort of trauma where you maybe you've had a chronic illness or you've been hospitalized or you've had abuse scenarios in your childhood, then your brain is already ready to go. It, it's been programmed somatically, connecting with your body to mobilize you in times of deep stress and if if that doesn't work it then has this third layer the the red zone where you actually collapse and you freeze and that is marked by as i said a very depressed sounding voice and maybe flaccid muscles um, you you can't digest properly you're usually um, you have diarrhea it's it's really quite grim living in a freeze state but so many people do and so many people don't know what it feels like to feel somatically or bodily safe and so we have this large um, trigger going on in society at the moment which i hope will be temporary and i hope we can find other ways maybe even making um, transparent masks would be a really good idea i know that when you're wearing a full face visor that actually works very well um, but we need to think about cutting off this sensory information that is is making us all very very anxious so um, the antidote to that by the way obviously is not to wear masks but in the absence of that is to connect more with the people that you are being treated by or the people that you're interacting with and and you know maybe you can you can stand away from them but get them to remove the mask if that's possible and just be able to connect and hear their voice and, and try and focus on the things that are safe and are working. And anyway, that's a way to do it. Um, if all else fails, havening for yourself, which involves self-touch, just as I'm doing here, um, can help to regulate the nervous system. And just reminding yourself that you're here, you're safe, whatever's happening, it's temporary, and you're really going to be okay. Um, for more information on this, um, do subscribe. Also check out my other videos below and uh, thanks for listening. Bye for now.